again, we want to welcome you to our webinar workshop this Wednesday morning. We do appreciate you waking up and spending a small part of your day with us. My name is Brian Griffin, a marketing assistant here at Messer Financial Group. Many of you are already familiar with Messer Financial, but in case you don't know, we are an FMO located in Mint Hill, North Carolina. We started with just two agents, and now we are serving 20,000 plus across 40 states and still growing. So today, we'll actually be talking to one of the most requested carriers Messer has ever had, Medico. Uh, Medico is one of the go-to carriers for many of our agents. So, so much so that many of the agents, uh, or newer agents, wouldn't come on board until we brought Medico on board. Uh, Medico is a combination of ter a terrific product suite, um, affordability, and they're super easy to work with. That's why agents love them. So today, we have Augusta Norris, AKA Gus, with us uh, to give us a high level overview of those products that so many agents love. So Gus has actually been with Medico a little over two years, um, has moved from account executive to sales director. Uh, she currently resides in Omaha, Nebraska with her two beautiful dogs and coaches high school softball in her spare time. So what more could you ask for? Before we do get started, a few housekeeping rules. We're gonna hold all questions until the end of the presentation. If you do have questions, just type in the box on the right-hand side of your screen, and we'll get to as many of you as we can at the conclusion of the presentation. Now, without any further delay, Gus Norris. Thank you, Brian, for that introduction. And thank you everybody for being on here this morning and spending your Wednesday morning with me. We are gonna go over what Medico's ancillary plans look like. We're gonna go over a little bit of reasons of who Medico is and why to choose us, and then how we're gonna go about selling these plans. Um, we do have a really great Mayan roller, which is gonna come in extremely handy during this time right now because it has that voice authorization. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to hear about that and how you can go about selling it. So while we jump in here, don't forget about your questions. If you have any at all, please feel free to ask them. Um, chances are somebody else might be thinking the same thing. So reasons to choose Medico, why Medico? The whole reason that we give these um, trainings and presentations is why we want you to choose Medico when you're out and about and you're thinking about these ancillary plans. First and foremost, Medico is financially strong and stable. What we see as financially strong and stable is that we're growing. And we have over the past few years, and we're going to keep growing. We feel really, really strongly about the products that we do have, and we feel really strongly about our A and best rating of the A minus. That's an excellent rating. Um, what they're saying is, hey, we see that, and we really see your proactive approach to doing business, um, which means that you have a team of people behind you. And not only does our company have a team of people behind us, but you as our partners, um, you have a team of people behind you. You have sales departments, you have service teams, you have underwriting, and you have claims behind you. We're here to support you, and that makes us strong and stable as a company. We believe that we have a very proactive way of doing business. And um, what that means is that we like to be out and in front of you. Unfortunately, we can't literally be in front of you right now, but this right here, this is helping, and this is really being proactive about our business. We have some great innovative tools, which is that Mayan roller that we're gonna to touch on later, and I think you're gonna love it. If you haven't already used it, I'm going to encourage you, almost challenge you to start using that. Um, the best part of this whole thing here is that accessible and expedient underwriters. The reason being is our underwriters are in-house, and what that means is you as an agent, you have access to those underwriters. If you have any questions, if you have Maybe you have a policy and it got denied, unfortunately, and you think, hey, you know what, I just, I think maybe I want somebody else to look at that. You can call in and say, ask them to do a second look, and they're going to do that for you. Our underwriters are extremely quick. Our time, our service time is two days or less on average. And with that direct access to them, you can also do a pre screen so if you have a client and you're writing them an application and you think, you know, I'm just not sure, but actually I'm going to pass. I don't want to spend a ton of time on somebody that I'm not sure is going to pass this. You can call in and you can do a pre-screen. You can ask them all the questions that you need to, go over their medications, go over their pre-existing conditions, and they're going to sit there and they're going to talk you through it. It's a great tool to have access to your underwriters. 
And then the best part here, we really want to develop that partnership with you. We want to help you grow your business as much as we want to help grow our business. And then most of all, we're easy to do business with. So one of the things that we're going to touch on while we go through here is customer loyalty and retention. When we talk about our ancillary products, most likely there's already a base product. And that might be a Medicare supplement, a Medicare Advantage. It doesn't matter. There might be a base product. So the number that we really want to touch on and what ancillary products are coming in to do is build that retention. And that's what these numbers are that you're seeing here. What we're seeing and what we want to talk about is, is if you have one product in a household, you only have a 35% chance of keeping that customer longer than five years. So the whole point of ancillary products and what I want you to see today and have access to today are those second and third products. Because when you get to two and three, you start getting a 56% chance and over a 92% chance that you keep that customer five years or longer. You're gonna be their go-to agent. So that's where ancillary products are gonna come into play. That's what you're gonna take away from today is how to get to that second and third product. The first product we're gonna start with today is dental. And we really believe that our dental is a great product. It's a standalone product. So that's something to remember when we're looking through here. This is not a family plan. It is an individual standalone product. But why doesn't your client have dental coverage in the first place? Why aren't they going to the dentist in the first place? The biggest reasons are, are the average cost of dental services that you're seeing here. And you can see the link at the bottom if you do want to go out and maybe explore these just a little bit more. This is what's showing you um, average. This is national average. I know it says Chicago, but if you think of where Chicago is, it's a national average. Um, even if they're getting something done like an x-ray, it's going to be $90. It's $90 might not be that much at first, but if we have to get a couple of them, it's going to start to add up. And then if they need bridges, the bridges are going to be over $4,000. If you really stop and think about it, it really is no wonder that only 40% of the senior population hasn't even seen a dentist in the last year. So 40% of the people that we're talking to, 65 and over, have not even been to a dentist in a year. What that's causing are emergency room visits for dental services. Um, by the time they do go, they have more things wrong than if they would have just went in the first place. But the reason being is they don't know this is available. They don't know that a standalone individual plan is available when they come off that group health, they can go out and they can get this kind of plan. Now, our issue ages are 18 to 89. So you might not be able to write a family plan, but you can go in and write a family if you wanted to, and everybody would just have different policies. Um, it's still very, very easy to do. It's still very, very cost effective that way as well. It's guaranteed renewable until age 89. The annual deductible is going to be $100 across the board. There's going to be three plans that we talked about today. And even though there's three plans, there's actually four maximums. And what that means, we're going to take a look at what these plans are. There's four policy year maximums in these three plans. We think that we have a very wide range of a dental portfolio because you can choose from dental only, you can choose from dental vision and hearing, which is our most popular, and then you can choose dental plus. So let's figure out which one of these is best for your clients and which one is best for your portfolio. And the reason I say that is because once you get out there and you start showing all of these numbers, all of these amounts, people get a little sometimes it's best to take one and say, you know what, this fits my portfolio. This fits the group of people that I talk to. Usually it's gonna be your dental vision and hearing. But the dental only. Dental only is for people who want to regularly visit the dentist. Um, it's more for preventive care. They're not as worried about their teeth. Or maybe they're already healthy. They just want some backup coverage is really what that dental is looking for. And the policy or maximum is $1,000. Dental vision and hearing. It has two policy year maximums. That's where that fourth one comes into play here. Even though it has two policy year maximums, the plan itself is the same. It just lets you change that part. That's really going to come into play with you as an agent. You need to know what the average costs are in your area to see which uh, maximum is best for you to go ahead and recommend for your client. You want to make sure that if $1,000 is 20, then go ahead with that one. If 1500 is needed, if they're in somewhere that's a little bit more expensive, go ahead and go with that 1500 On average, your premium's gonna be fairly similar. 
So we can see with the dental vision and hearing how their coverage is going to build over the first, second, and third year. There's no waiting period on the basic restorative services, and then there's also no waiting period on vision services. So this is for somebody who's going to want that immediate coverage. Um, if they might want to go ahead and get that eye exam done, they want some kind of protective, and they have that interest in the hearing services as well. Simple Plus. Simple Plus is going to be the same um, in coverages as the DVH. It's going to have that higher policy year maximum of 2500 and it's also going to include implants. So if you have somebody who has a concern with implants or something that they know they're going to need at some point in life, go with the plus. One of the best things about our dental product is our freedom of choice is what we call when it comes to the network. We call ours a freedom of choice and there's a couple different reasons. And that's because your client can choose any provider that they want. So let's say you have a client and they've been going to the same dentist for 35 years and people can be a little set in their ways. I mean, I'm one of them. I don't like change either. Um, and they've been going for 35 years and they say, well, I don't know if they're in the network or not, but I don't want to change dentists. You can say, okay, that's awesome. You don't have to. You're still going to be covered, even though they're not in the maximum care network that's powered by caring students into max. They don't necessarily have to be in there. Luckily, that network is one of the largest, um, but they're still going to be covered. We also do not coordinate benefits. What that means is that your client may use this medical product. They can also have another dental product if they wanted to. So when I say that as a standalone, it means that we stand separately. We're not going to coordinate with anybody else. If you want to have a medical product and another one, if you have somebody that has that in their budget, that's great. Go ahead and go with that. If you want to find where the Carrington Dentamax Network is, if you maybe want to help your client, they say, you know, um, I wouldn't be opposed to changing. I can go ahead and do that. You can help them. You can go to the consumer website instead of the agent website, and I can give you that. That's www.gomedico.com. Then you're going to go to policy holders, and then you're going to go to dental network. And it's going to go off of their three-digit zip code, the first three digits of their zip code, to help them find a dentist and network if they want to go ahead and go there. So where is this available? Every state that you see in blue, that is where the dental is going to be available for you to go ahead and sell. Really the only one you're looking at that's not, that's kind of out of the ordinary would be Kentucky. Okay, so with dental covered, if you do have any questions about dental, go ahead, ask them. We'll get to those as we go on, but we're going to jump into cancer. And this is a plan that I am really, really passionate about because I feel we should never, ever, ever leave a household either without a cancer sale or without at least bringing up the conversation and maybe putting that thought in somebody's head. Most of the time, the person you're talking to, they either have somebody in their family, their neighbor, their friends, their coworker, somebody that they know who has been affected by cancer, which in return affects them. And even though they might not bring it up, you may have to bring this conversation up. It's one that's extremely important. Actually, we um, did a little bit of research and we wanted to look at where we were in 2017. I know 2017 is a few years back now, but it's good to know what these numbers look like because they're actually growing. 1.6 million people were diagnosed with cancer in 2017. That number is growing, which means that, unfortunately, the opportunity is growing to have a cancer sale. And if we have any kind of home, car, most of us have life insurance, we have insurance on everything. Literally everything. If you want to ship something to, or if you buy something off Amazon, you can get insurance for that. If you want to ship something, you can get insurance for that. So we have insurance for literally everything. Why would cancer be any different? But let's talk about the odds. That's one that kind of seems to resonate with people. I know it does with me, especially if I'm sitting in a room with other people. So if you're in a room with four people, you can look at this and say one in four chances of a reported home fire in an average lifetime. So look in that room with four people, one of you is probably going to have a home fire in your lifetime. Average person has three to four car accidents per lifetime. I thought that was high for a while until I started going out and talking to more people, and they're like, no, 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 that, that really is average. So you think about it that way. And then one in 100 people actually claim on a life term policy, or a term life policy. That's extremely low. That's a 1% chance that anybody's actually going to claim on it. But when we look at cancer, about one in two men, so 50%, and one in three women, 33%, will develop some form of cancer during their lifetime. 
Now, when you're talking about the odds with your client, so when you're talking about this cancer product, you go into a slide like this and you talk about the odds. We're saying some form. We are not saying a life-threatening. They might, it might be skin cancer. It might be anything. But it's a way to talk about having the odds out there because it makes them think if they're comparing it to a home fire, they're comparing it to a car accident, it may be, resonate just a little bit with them, and it's not so negative in that aspect. So what's this plan look like? Plan benefits here. There's four lump sums, um, 10000 15 20 and 25000 It's paid directly to your policyholder, and the best part is it's tax-free. They don't want, we do not want, nobody wants them to have to worry about paying taxes on a lump sum that's put towards cancer. The policy has been depleted, so they've been, they'll pay premium on whatever lump sum they pay. As soon as it's paid out, it will go directly to that policyholder, and then it's depleted. They'll get a letter that tells them about this, so they're not just wondering what's happened. But let's say, let's give an example here. Let's say you have a 65-year-old man. So it's a man. He has a 50% chance of um, being diagnosed with cancer. He gets a $25,000 plan. That's our highest plan. It's going to be $65 a month. Just so you know, if you went with $10,000, you're ranging about $25, $28 a month. So he has this plan for five years. He pays premiums for five years, $65 a month for five years. That's going to be a little under $4,000. That's it, $3,900. And then he gets diagnosed with cancer. So for that $3,900 that he's paid in, he's going to get $25,000 out and paid to him. He can spend that on whatever he wants. Um, that's his money to have. There's so many indirect costs that come with a cancer diagnosis, whether it's traveling to and from appointments. Um, I had somebody one time tell me that they had a lady that got this and she had to spend it on buying new clothes because chemo made it, her lose so much weight. She didn't have any clothes that fit. So it's whatever they want to do with it. If they want to take their family to Disney World for like a, a fun vacation to take their mind off of it, they can do that. Do I encourage it? Probably not. But they can. They sure can because it's the indirect cost of cancer that seems to cost so much more. So our cancer plan, that's what it looks like. Again, if you have any questions, please ask them. Uh, we'll go over them when we get done today. Just remember that I'm going to send all of these slides over to Brian for them to distribute to you guys. So if you're asking for the slides, don't worry about it. You're going to get them. They're going to come to you. Um, so don't worry about asking that question. You just worry about the information that you're seeing here. We're going to go over to the hospital indemnity plan. And the hospital indemnity plan is one of my favorite plans here at Medico because it is so encompassing and it can be sold anywhere. We're going to jump in first to the basic part of the hospital indemnity before we get into adding all those riders and a great way to work with your clients adding those riders. I'm also going to show you some marketing pieces that you're going to get in a follow up package as well today. But just a few basics. So if you're writing notes, make sure you take these down. Our issue ages for hospital indemnity is 40 to 85. There's no attained age premium adjustment. So what that means is the premium they come in at, that's the premium they're gonna stay at. There's also a 7% household discount. With that 7% household discount, what that means is here at Medico, is if your client lives in the same household as someone over the age of 18, then they are going to get a 7% household discount on their product. That person over the age of 18 does not necessarily have to apply for coverage now, if ever. Is it great if they do? Yes, but they don't necessarily have to. And then there's also no policy fee. So when you write these policies, you don't have to pay a fee to send them in like you do some of the other um, companies. Where are we available? These are the states that we're going to be available in. Just a little note here that sometimes hospital indemnity can be called something different. So states like Arkansas, Colorado, Utah, Pennsylvania, it's just gonna have a different name, and most likely you guys already know that. It's just good to know that the product is exactly the same, just the name's a little different. So defining hospital indemnity, um, super easy. What's gonna happen is your client goes into the hospital, when they get out, claims are filed, they're gonna get a check paid directly to them. Very, very easy to, uh, to file claims. What you can do is you can use a UBO4, you're gonna ask the hospital for it, or your client can, sorry. Your client can ask the hospital for UBO4, send that in. Um, if the hospital will send the claim form in for them, that's great too. Um, some places just won't, but just know that usually that takes a little bit longer for them to do it because they have so much going on. 
So if your client can, just ask that UBO for, send that into Medico, and then they don't have to have the claim forms filled out. Or they can fill the claim forms out and send those in. So they have a few different options, um, but it's going to be easy no matter what. So the base plan. When we look at the base plan, there's going to be five options for it. Um, we're going to dive into each of these here, but this is what the five options for your base plan are. Hospital confinement, that's where they're paying on day one. Observation unit, um, that's going to be one of your best sellers, especially right now during COVID-19 and during normal times. Emergency room, transportation and lodging, inpatient mental health. One of the really good parts about the base plan of our hospital indemnity is there is a restoration of benefits. What that means is let's say that they choose, your client chooses the six day, $350 per day option here with the hospital confinement. If they go in, they use five days and then they're healthy as can be for the next 60 days at their home. They don't have to go back to the hospital. Their days are gonna be fully reset back to six days. And that's going to continue to happen. This is not a one-time restoration. This is going to continue to happen. So when they use it, they come off of care, they're going to be able to get this uh, restored back to them every 60 days. All right, so the hospital confinement piece of your base plan. This is gonna pay each day of a hospital confinement starting on day one. And your client's gonna choose their day. So they can choose day six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 21, or 31. And then they're gonna be able to choose their day amount. So they can choose between 100 to 600 and move in $25 increments. I'm going to tell you right now what the most popular we're seeing is six days, $350 per day. And North Carolina is our top selling state for hospital indemnity. So that's what we're seeing in North Carolina. So if you guys are out there in North Carolina, that's what the most popular that we're seeing. And the reasons being are we're having those hospital inflation rates and they are growing over the years. It is more affordable to put that on the hospital indemnity plan than it is going to be anywhere else. That's where you're going to account for it at. So $350 per day is the highest that we're seeing, or average that we're seeing, not the highest. Observation unit. So what this is going to be is as soon as your client goes to a hospital, most of the time they're going to be put in an observation unit. Clients are being coded as observation unit a lot longer. Um, this is going to be 100% covered on your observation unit benefit part of the basics. Ways that this is different than anybody else. There, we have no minimum or maximum hours per stay required to use the observation unit. Other companies are going to have to have six to 12 hours in an observation unit before they start seeing any kind of coverage. This is not going to be the case here. So let's think about our current situation in the world with the COVID-19. If you have a client, they go to the hospital, they get tested. Most likely, they're not just going to say, hey, thanks for the test, go on home. They're going to say, nope, you're going to have to stay for a while. They're going to stay in an observation unit waiting on those test results. When they put it, are put in there, this can get up to twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. So we want to make sure that they're covered, not having to pay that out of pocket. Whether that test is positive or negative, they're going to seek um, observation unit. So where did they go to get tested? They probably went into the emergency room. The emergency room, $150 per day, recovered loss, admitted within 24 hours four days per calendar year. What this one means, it was, yes, it says admitted within 24 hours. But let's think about it this way. 90% of the people over 65 that go to the emergency room are admitted within 24 hours, just because of the age. Now, if they're not admitted, they're going to be sent to an observation unit for a little while, whether it's five hours or three days, they're gonna be sent to an observation unit. Either way, For a COVID-19 test, they're going to be held in one of those two places. So either way, they're still going to be covered in their base plan because they went to the emergency room. Transportation and lodging. This is the one I think is one of the best reasons to sell this plan. And one of the really awesome pieces about this is it really doesn't, it, it doesn't um, put any extra work on your client. What this is, is if your, your policyholder lives 50 miles or more from the hospital, so they have to travel 50 miles or more to go to a hospital, they're going to receive $100 per day for a maximum of 10 days per year, so think $1,000 at their disposal. Um, let's say that you have some rural area folks, so I always think about my parents, they live 100 miles from the biggest hospital. If they got the, if they got the coronavirus, they would have to go 100 miles either north or south. 
to stay in a hospital. They would start re receiving payment every day that they are gone. And that to me is comforting, knowing that the money they spent to get down there, they're going to get some of that back. Whether it's in hotel costs or it's in gas money, they're going to receive that money back. And I know that they get to be there with each other. What this is for, the whole thing behind this is, is to be able to bring their loved ones with them to a hospital stay. And they know that they can afford a, ho a hotel room or gas money. The only thing needed here is the claim form because it tells us how far away the hospital was from the policyholder address. We don't need anything else when it comes to this portion of the base plan. No extra work to file a claim for this. And then lastly, the inpatient mental health. So the mental health benefit is going to be $175 today for a maximum of seven days per calendar year. This has to be a certified uh, mental health facility. This is for the um, confinement in the hospital for the covered mental health or nervous disorders. So there's just a couple of different pieces that fall in here. We already went over what the restoration of benefits are, but this is just a really good example here. Um, and this is just Jane. She chose a six-day option. She went into the hospital for five days and she was discharged. She went that 60 continuous days out of the hospital and then medical set her days back to six for her. So great thing to have. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about how to actually um, really customize this plan to your client. This is a piece that I want you guys to really think about the clients that you have right now. And we can think about personalizing each one of these plans to them. No plan has to be the same. That's the great part about this is when you sit down with your client and you start going through these, you can really show them how they customize their plan. It creates that trust with them. And when it creates that trust and you start selling more product, products to them, that recreates that customer retention and loyalty. And that's what we want anyways. We want to build that loyalty, build that retention. It's a great way to do that with them. Our most popular rider is the ambulance services here. And there's a couple different reasons. Um, one, I believe that an ambulance service should be ride added to everything. Reason being is if you need an ambulance ride, you're going to be able to get one from an ambulance services, not from maybe your kids or your spouse. It's going to be harder to get them to answer the phone than it is somebody that runs an ambulance service here. And Ambulance services take you to the emergency room every time, which means you're still going to be covered because you have the base plan. This is going to cover $250 per day, <clears throat> up to four days per calendar year. If you notice that all of ours are calendar year, we do not go off of policy year. We go off calendar year. So January to December. So even if you wrote a policy in August, the calendar year still ends in December for them, and they start over in January. Outpatient, oh, ambulance services, sorry, I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. This is going to cover ground and air transportation. So that air transportation, that's where Medica is just a little bit different from someone else's. Outpatient therapy, chiropractic services, this is our two-for-one rider here. Um, I like that it's a two-for-one. You're kind of getting a really good deal on it because the premium is so low. What the outpatient therapy covers is going to be occupational therapy, speech, and physical therapy. It's going to be $50 per day, and they get to choose 15 or 30 days per calendar year. When it comes down to the premium of that 15 or 30 days, you're looking at $1.50, $2 maybe. So if it's in the budget, give them a full month of therapy if possible. And then the chiropractic services, it's $50 per day for a maximum of five days per calendar year. Just has to be doctor prescribed. It's going to include manual adjustments, manipulations of the spine. Think of somebody who may be on a car wreck. They're going to need just a little bit of help sometimes. They can use those five days per year. Um, outpatient therapy or surgery, sorry. This is our second most popular rider. And one really good way to think about this, what most of our claims actually are right now, are people that are getting cataract surgery. If they have a left eye done for cataract surgery, they're most likely going to have a right eye done. And that's going to cover their two days per calendar year. Um, amounts they get to choose from. $250, $500, $750, or $1,000 per day. Skilled nursing. This one is being paired with a lot of different things. And what I say, what I mean by that is Med Advantage, Medicare supplements, long-term care. It's being paired with all of these because there's a fit for it. This is a helper plan. When you think of the skilled nursing one, this is to help out. This is not end all be all. So they get to choose $100, $150, or $200 per day. And it's going to be days one through 50, and they need to have plus restoration of benefits. 
This one is a little bit longer, and this one is a once per lifetime of the policy. It's 180 days, so about six months, that they're going to have to wait off of care to get those days restored to them. Um, really good ways to sell this. If you have people with Medicare Advantage, they can start using this claim on day 21 of their plan. So they have those first 20 days covered. They can use it on day 21. The claim does not have to start when they go into the facility. So long-term care, you can help eliminate those 90 days if that's the case. You get 50 of them eliminated. That's going to help them a lot. Uh, it might not completely cover it, but it's going to be extremely helpful. Lump sum cancer. This is Medicare's second option for somebody who has had cancer. We give you two options to write a cancer plan with Medico. What is different about ours and what nobody else in the market offers is a two-year look back. So if you have somebody who had cancer five years ago, you're going to be able to write them a writer here. Now, it's extremely affordable to write a $5,000, even a $10,000 writer. You're still going to be looking at, um, with the base plan, about $20 a month. That's affordable. If for somebody who has had cancer, they also know that that's going to be extremely helpful. So your amount you can choose from, $1,000, $2,500, $5,000, $7,500, or $10,000 per lifetime. Again, an even better reason to make sure we're talking about cancer before we leave a household. You have two options within the same company. Um, urgent care center. What is so important about the urgent care center right now? This is where all of our pop-up testing um, clinics are going on or at the urgent care center. So if they go, if you have a client that goes to an urgent care center for a pop-up testing, they may never set a foot in the actual building of the care center, but it's still going to be billed and coded as an urgent care center visit, which means you will be, they will be covered underneath this rider. They're going to have $50 per day. So let's say they go there, their co-payment was $40. They're going to get that back for $50. And then there's a maximum of four days per calendar year. So that's a really good reason to make sure we're talking about this rider in particular. Now, if we're, I'm using air quotes in normal times, and this is where a lot of people are starting to go because the lines aren't as long as an emergency room. They can do a lot of the same thing. So like stitches, um, if their arm is broken, they can put it in a spleen. There's a lot of things that they can do. I always tell people that we have them based on every street corner here in Omaha. And last year I was using a potato peeler and just took a chunk right out of the end of my finger. I was up there, they glued it back together and I was out of there in less than an hour. So a lot of people are going to urgent care centers now. Lump sum hospital confinement, what this is, is basically just money for staying in the hospital. If you have a client that go to a hospital, they have to stay there. They're going to receive $250, $500, or $750, whatever they choose, for one, two, or three confinements per calendar year. Okay, so that's what the product looks like. Let's look at a client scenario here. So if you're kind of thinking, all right, I really like this product. I just don't know maybe where to start, or can I get some new ideas, some new fresh ideas? Let's take a look at Anna here. Anna is 70 years old in this instance, and Anna has a five-day hospital stay. She slips and fell. She has some of the, we got snow on Sunday here, and we have more snow coming. So she slips and fell on some of the snow that we have going on here. And she has to go to the hospital. She has to take an ambulance right there. And then after the hospital, they say, you know what, Anna, your hip just isn't right. We're going to send you over to a skilled nursing facility for 20 days. She says, all right, I'm all going to do that. So her out-of-pocket cost, this is before she has a hospital indemnity. So this is before you got to talk to her about a hospital indemnity plan. So what her out-of-pocket costs are looking like right now is $4,450 for this little slip and fall on the ice. But let's stop and think about this before we go into writing her plan. On average, a household that is 65 and over, on average in their savings, is $5,600. So right now, Anna basically just cleared out her bank account, her savings account, because she slipped and fell on the snow or the ice. So let's see how we can prevent that. Keep that in mind as we go through here. How are we going to prevent that? First and foremost, we come to our first little marketing piece. So this works me here. This is going to be part of your follow-up package. Um, and it is awesome. It's a customizable PDF. And what you can do with this, and you can still use this right now, guys. So don't think just because we're not face-to-face, -face, you can't use this worksheet. If you are using Zoom, which I got to use on Sunday for the first time, it's pretty exciting. Um, you can do, you can show this on your screen. If you're using Skype, you can show it on your screen. If you're using GoToWebinar, as we're doing right now, you can show this worksheet to your client on their screen. They just have to be able to see it on their side. 
You can email this worksheet. If they don't have email, they don't have a way of seeing it on their screen, print it off and send it to them. People are not getting as much mail right now. They're going to look at it. But what we do here, so let's say they have a Medicare Advantage plan. We're going to fill in their Advantage plan up here at the top of this worksheet. What we're going to see by doing that is the amb maybe ambulance services, they're going to have a completely blank row here. Um, outpatient surgery, they're going to have a completely blank, blank row here. What it's showing is a gap in their coverage so that you can come down to the bottom of this plan, make sure they have their base plan filled out, and then you can say, all right, at the top, you have a blank in your ambulance services, so let's add it down here. And you basically just fill in the gaps here. It's a math problem that you fill in the gaps to. By the time you get to the bottom of it, it shows them what Medico is going to be paying them. So you have their total out of pocket costs up here, and then you're seeing what Medico is going to pay them down here. What this is going to work like is um, Anna, so let's say over here we wrote Anna a plan, and we did her inpatient, we did $250. We did a little bit less than what the average that we're seeing right now. We wrote her, it's going to cover $1,250. That includes her emergency room, also includes a transportation lodging because she had to stay there for five days and she had to travel over 50 miles. So it includes that transportation and lodging. She had to take an ambulance service, so we added the ambulance. And then we also happened to add some skilled nursing facilities for her. We added that $100 today. What this comes out to in this instance is that Anna is going to, instead of spending that $4,450, she's going to get $4,150 from Medico. So she's only going to end up spending $300 out of pocket for her, for that unexpected slip and fall. What that means is we kept her savings intact. She is going to love you for that. Um, she's going to go out. Maybe you, you're going to get some referrals from this. She's going to say, I use my Medico Hospital Indemnity Plan. This is my agent. Go get one with them. Because it saves her over $4,000, almost $4,000. That's the best part about this is it's working for you. This plan works for you because it shows you how much can be saved, and they're going to be extremely happy that you just talk to them about it. So selling medical products, you already seen the worksheet, but one of the things I want you guys to work on, and um, this is something I can help you with as well, this is what we call a value chart. Um, and what I usually do is I like to go out and I like to ask our top selling agents, hey, what are you doing? What works for you? Why are you selling so much of this? Um, what marketing pieces are you using? And we're finding that a lot of them are building these charts. They're building five or six of these charts with different writers, different day amounts, different ages. Um, they're doing male and female. So it's showing different premiums with payouts. But what we did here is we took Anna and we said, all right, what if we write her an all-encompassing plan, a full coverage plan? We did every writer out there. And I upped her days to $350 per day because that is the average that we're seeing here. And her premium came out to $18.80 with a potential payout of $2,100. So if we went back to that example and we paid her that $2,100, um, she would have net pocketed money. She actually would have made money off the hospital indemnity. She would have went out up. So there, again, it's just a matter of how much you're putting in to what her plan is to see how much money she's getting back. Ambulance rider, if you look at that, guys, under $3. On average, this rider is averaging a little under $3 to $3.50 per month. That is extremely affordable for anybody. That's why I also encourage it to be written with every plan. Skilled nursing, under $8. The one I want to jump down and look at, though, is that lump sum cancer. For a $5,000 plan, you're under $9 per month. Again, meaning we will never pay in on premium what they get out for a payout for that cancer plan. If they do use that cancer plan and they um, have to use it, they file a claim on it, they'll, um, we will send them a letter that tells them that this much premium has been depleted off of your hospital indemnity plan. This is what your new premium is. So don't worry about that. They will get a letter that states that. So here we said Anna added every writer. Her monthly premium comes out to $53.55 with a potential payout of $14,400. That's, I call this a risk versus reward, what I'm paying versus what I'm getting is substantial and i think that's really going to speak to anybody even when they start throwing out that budget card you can say okay but look at how this is going to add up so quickly let us try to help you in any way possible if you're looking for some ideas um i call these additional opportunities and they're just ways to kind of pair with medicare advantage medicare supplements or other because if you remember 
Um, this plan does not necessarily have to be written with either of these. It's a standalone plan. They don't have to have that kind of quote unquote base coverage of a Medicare Advantage or supplement. You could write them a standalone hospital indemnity plan. It does go down to 40. So sometimes those are an option um, for some of those people. But if you want to create a full coverage with a Medicare Advantage, we could keep their premium at $23 by just adding an ambulance service or an outpatient surgery. If we want to do a Medicare supplement and provide extra coverage, because that's what we would be doing if we wrote this with a supplement, it's extra. You can write a skilled nursing writer and a cancer writer, and you would keep it about $21.50. If we want to do other, so other, we would need to provide kind of a lot of coverage. Um, we would want to do a comprehensive plan. We went pretty big on the base plan, that lump sum confinement and an ambulance writer, you still have $45 in premium. So selling Medicare's hospital indemnity plan, we do have the customer materials and agent materials out on the website for you. Um, there's flyers, there's postcards, there's um, any kind of highlight sheets, reference guides, worksheets, brochures. Um, one of the things to kind of think about here is right now people are not getting a lot of mail. So this might be a really good time for you to send out flyers, postcards. Um, there's also a letter out there because they're going to actually see it and look at it. Um, with the COVID-19, businesses are not, um, well, they're not in business, actually, so they're not sending out things, and that's why we see our mail is down quite a bit. Um, so go ahead and send out those flyers and postcards if you can. All right, so the Mayan Roller, how are we going to sell this? The thing that I really just want to touch on here, guys, is, um, one, when times are back to normal, you can use the Mayan Roller really anytime, anywhere, because you don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi to use it. Um, you can use it out in the boonies and then go back to your office and connect to the Wi-Fi and submit your application into underwriting that way. This does update overnight, so you always have the correct forms and rates. You can do multiple applications at the same time. So if you want to get to those two applications at the same time while you're sitting there, maybe a med sup and a hospital indemnity, you can do that. And now you're already at 56% um, for your customer retention and customer loyalty just by writing two at the same time. But the multiple signature options, that's what you guys need to know about right now because you have that voice authorization. So over the phone, you can do that. Um, what you have to do, you have to have you on the phone that's going to be able to conference you both in. So most cell phones, office phones are going to be able to do that. When you click on the voice authorization, it'll bring up a prompt for you to read. You have to read that verbatim because that is their signature. It goes on their file. And then that's catch for them. There's a way that you have to sign off for that and you have to do it, otherwise it keeps recording um, and doesn't actually shut itself off. So you can imagine how long that would be by the time that anybody realizes it and it's on their file. Um, so just make sure if you're gonna do that, you have to have your, I know you have to have your agent number with you, so make sure you just kind of have that in front of you. Um, there's also electronic signatures. So if somebody doesn't wanna do it over the phone, you can still do this. Um, if they have email, you can fill out their application, you can email it to them. They can sign it that way and then send it in. When we're back to normal times and you can see them face to face, you can still do electronic signature, but you can do in person and it'll give you the option right there. And it shows you how to do that by um, agreeing to their name, birthday, and phone number. The biggest thing with the mind roller though is the policy can get issued quicker, you're gonna get paid sooner. Something really quick to remember about that is we no longer take credit cards on paper application. You have, if they're gonna have a credit card, it has to go through the Mayan roller. And a hospital indemnity, if you're writing it, it's all those day amounts and dollar amounts, it's gonna be easier for you to go that way anyway. Okay, let's make some money. And what I mean by that is we have agent incentive program going on. So there are two parts to this incentive program, and one actually does not have to coincide with the other. If you wanna do Medicare supplement and hospital indemnity, make money on both of them, by all means, you go for it. Also, I'm gonna be sending this flyer with the follow-up package, so don't worry about going out and pulling it from the website. The Medicare supplement part, you have to have a minimum of five applications submitted and approved in the same month, and you'll get $100 per underwritten Medicare supplement. So our little example down here, let's say in April, you wrote seven, that's $700. May, you wrote eight, that's 800. Nine in June, that's 900, that equals $2,400, just in bonus money. Now let's say, hey, you think that that hospital indemnity is just the best thing that ever happened to you. It's going to be your easiest sale yet, and you sell a ton of it. Let's say these work in tiers. So the thing I want you to see here is it's paid retroactively. 
So in April, if you write eight applications, that's $25 per application. But then by the end of June, you've written 24 applications. And now you're at the $50 per application tier. We're going to go back to those applications from April and pay you another $25. So everything is worth $50 in the next instant. Okay, guys. That's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for being on here with me. This is my contact information. Um, I'm kind of your voice of reasoning here at Medico, so if you need anything, please feel free to reach out. I'm working from home, so you can get a hold of me pretty easily. And that's also my email address. You can have that if you need me. If you need anything at all, please feel free to reach out. Thank you so much for having me on today, and just for taking time out of your morning to join me. I know even though you're at home, you're extremely busy. Just stay healthy, um, stay safe. Medico is taking a lot of precautions to make sure that we're safe as employees, but ultimately that means that we get to help keep you guys safe and your clients. So if you have any questions, please make sure you ask them and I'll do my best to answer them. Hey Gus, thank you so much uh, for going through that information. Um, just a lot of really good information. Um, we do have a few questions here that, um, that I wanna get to uh, before we close out. So we'll just kind of dive right into it. Um, the first question is, do you have a list of the most popular plans for different states? Um, I'm assuming that we're talking about hospital indemnity, and I don't have by state, but I have what Medico is seeing overall. And um, overall, we are seeing a six-day option for $350 per day, and then the ambulance rider, the outpatient surgery and the cancer rider are our three most popular overall right now during this time that urgent care though is just it's soaring over the past two months because people know that that's what the pop-up testing is so they're selling a ton of those um, but those are our three most popular riders overall okay excellent um, the next question is does the cancer policy have a recurrence policy it does not Nope. Wow. Okay. So just just to be mm -hmm. clear, so if there is a, a a client that has had more than one occurrence of the cancer plan, as long as it's been beyond two years, they can still apply. So as long as let's say that you have somebody who has a hospital indemnity product with a cancer rider, and mm -hmm. they didn't have cancer for the past two years, but they developed cancer. They would use their lump sum and it would be depleted. Now, if they go five years down the road and they've been clean and they want to rewrite a cancer product, they would be able to cancel the hospital indemnity that they have and then rewrite that hospital indemnity with a cancer writer. Oh, wow. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. Can these plans be purchased without major medical plans? Yes, they can, because they are standalone plans. Excellent. Okay. And then the last question says, are any of the products confined to any networks? Um, nope. So the only one that even has a network associated with it is that dental one. And we kind of, we touched on that quite a bit, that they don't actually have to be in network to have coverage. It's just additional, if there's additional charges, they will be covered if they're in that network. Otherwise, they will not be. So they'll be, re it's basically a, our dental is an indemnity product versus insurance product. So if they're out of network, they will be met up to what they paid. But they can go out of network, they can go in network. Otherwise, um, hospital indemnity, there is not a network. Excellent. Okay. So once again, Gus, thanks so much for, for going through all the information that you did um, and taking the time out of your morning to share with our agents. Um, before we, we close out, is there anything that you want to say to the agents uh, in closing for yourself? Um, just thank you for ha having me today and being here. There's a lot of great information in here. So make sure when I send out these, uh, just really look over it. And if you need anything else from me, whether you just have a quick question, uh, marketing material, anything like that, just always feel free to know that you can reach out to me and to Medico. Um, we appreciate what you guys are doing, and we know this is a really, really hard time. It's it's confusing to be at home all the time, and I'm sure it is for you guys, too. Right. So just know we're all working together in this. So just feel free Absolutely. to always reach out. 
All right. Thank you so much again. Uh, once again, I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your day. Hopefully there was something that you learned today that you'll be able to implement into your business. Um, if you are not appointed with Medico, it only takes a few minutes to go into your Sure LC online contracting portal and request the appointment. If you do have additional questions about becoming appointed or contracting, please feel free to contact our producer support department at 866-568-9649, extension 7813, or you can email them at producer support at messerfinancial.com. They'll be happy to assist you in any way that they can. Um, also take a few moments to check out our events calendar at messerfinancial.com. We'll be having additional webinar workshops scheduled throughout the year with valuable information like we just got from Gus. Um, once again, thank you all so much for joining us this morning. Each of you have a great day and have a better week. Thank you. Thank you.